Hi, it's Carrie. Have you seen the amazing Methods Wizard that is part of the Systematic Review Accelerator Toolkit? I will put a link in the video description of the website here. There are a lot of tools in the suite and the tool that I'm in is the Methods Wizard. What I'm going to try to show you today are some of the things that you can do with this tool and uh, thinking off the cuff here, but let's go ahead and name our manuscript. And I'm just going to call it Cystic Fibrosis, uh, Cystic Fibrosis and Trichopta, a systematic review. Let's try to say, let's say we're going to publish it in this year, 2024, and then we'll move on. So I'm the author in this study, and then I have friends that I'm acknowledging. Let's see how this works. Yep, so you just add add them with the plus button. Okay, the title stayed there, the people, um, other people, because you need a team to conduct a systematic review. So this is actually the first time I'm using this tool, and we'll see what happens. The next step after title page and people is the research plan. It's giving us a breakdown of how we might tackle a systematic review. And over here you can check completed. You can see the corresponding tool from SR Accelerator, and you can make some notes to yourself. Once you've filled this out, you can download this then. So maybe you want to share it with your team outside of this website. So then let's look at the introduction, and this is where we write our intro. Cystic fibrosis is a disease. Okay, and then we'll keep going. Eligibility criteria. So you may think about your eligibility criteria for your upcoming systematic review in terms of population, in terms of intervention, in terms of a comparator, in terms of outcomes and setting. Looks like you have the option to add other. So if we say other, you can name your own value. And what's output? This would be what you end up entering up here will show up down here. So this can help you write your protocol. That's pretty amazing. Here's where you'll document your search strategy and you're going to say, yes, I worked with a librarian because you absolutely are going to be doing that. Were the search results restricted by publication type? We're going to say no. Were the search results restricted by language? We're going to say no. Who conducted the supplementary searches? Me. And did you conduct any of the following methods to supplement your search results. And he, here are some suggested methods. So you manually check reference lists of included studies, performed a backward citation analysis, forward citation analysis, contacted experts or used similar articles, features in databases. Scopus has this, PubMed has this, I believe Web of Science has this. What if we did them all? Well, yes, we did. Great, and then our output is here. So this can also help you write your protocol, eventually your review. Your search strings can live here. Let's start at the top. So we're going to search those recommended by Cochrane, which are PubMed containing Medline. So you could do Medline via another platform. We'll do Embase. We'll do the Cochrane library. Whoops. Um, if you make a mistake, you just uncheck it. We'll do the Cochrane Library and Cochrane Central. We'll do CINAHL. We'll do Scopus. Those are some of my favorites. Other, you can add another. What date did you run your search on? Well, today is 0108, 2024. I think this is an Australian tool, so maybe that's telling us August 1st. Whatever it is, just make sure it's clear. And then here, a question, did you have a date you ran the search back to or did you run the search from the inception of the database? Well, I think Trikafta in our theoretical topic is a fairly new intervention. So we might be justified here in saying that we limited it to 2010. And then here's where you're going to paste your search strategies once you've finalized them. So this is pretty amazing. I am smiling from ear to ear. And then which registries did you search? So if you're searching clinical trial registries, I usually search clinicaltrials.gov. 
I usually search the World Health Organization, Cochrane Central, and then some other ones as needed. What date did we run our search on? Again, we're going to say, for me, January 2024. And we're going to say that we limit it to 2010 and onward. And oh my gosh, this is amazing. Because trial registries often take simplified searches. They don't take, they don't take complex searches. So you can keep track of that here. And your output, I think, would be something that you could then include in your appendix. This is amazing. Study screening. So who conducted the study screening? Well, I don't screen, so I'm going to say other people <laughs> who retrieved the full text. Oh, yeah, other people. These are going to be names of your actual authors, just in case that's not clear. How many authors independently screened? It needs to be two or more. So ideally, you have some other authors. Which authors screen full text? Uh, not me. Other people. Who screened the citations? Other people. Who screened the trial registries? Your other authors. Disagreements were resolved by referring to a third author. That's typically how it's done. You can also use consensus. And is this systematic review reported following the preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analyses? Yes, it absolutely is. Do we know what that is? If we don't, we have to look it up. The list of studies excluded that full text is provided in appendix. Um, yeah, let's do that. So from whatever tool you're using, you'll just export a bibliography or a list of those citations that you can generate into a bibliography. We'll say output. That's our output for the screening part of our review. Now I'm going to move more quickly through these because these aren't usually the parts of the review I'm involved on. But just to show you what's available, we have data extraction. How many studies was the data extraction form piloted on? Usually it's something like at least five. Let's say at least five. How many authors? I will say two. Uh, both of us, Just let's just say theoretically. Do you wish to specify what data will be extracted? Yes. And then you'll need to go through all of that and then you'll get your output at the bottom. Assessment of the risk of bias, so we're moving on. Here you'll need to say zero if each author independently assessed the risk of bias. If this was more of a group effort, you can say two. But I'm going to say independent, which moves this number to zero. And so it'll be everybody independently. And we used the... Uh, Let's say we used Cochrane Risk of Bias 2 tool. That's the latest Cochrane ROB tool. Just need one, we don't need a whole bunch. And there's our output helping us to report this review according to Prisma. Measurement of effect, starting at the top, was a meta-analysis performed? Well, for this topic, I think a, a meta-analysis could be performed, so let's say yes. Let's say we used SPSS. What did we use to calculate treatment effect for dichotomous outcomes? I'm not a statistician here, so if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. I'm going to say odds ratios. Um, which, what measurement was used to calculate the treatment effect? Let's say mean, let's say standardized mean difference. What measure was used to calculate the treatment effect? Hazard ratio. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. How many studies reporting the same outcome triggered a meta-analysis? Three. If you're confused about any of this, you can read more in the Cochrane Handbook or the JBI Manual for Evidence Synthesis. They all go into greater detail here. What, you, what model was used in meta-analysis? Random effects. Here's our output. Hopefully it's not too wrong. Unit of analysis. What was our unit of analysis? We'll say individual, and our output is here. If we said individual and other, we get to make some adaptations. Missing data strategy. We contacted investigators or study sponsors to provide missing data. So that's just a statement you would make in your review. Heterogeneity. 
what was used to perform heterogeneity? Uh, let's say R squared. No, it's let's say I squared. I don't really know. I'd have to look it up. But let's just say that. <laughs> publication bias. We did not measure publication bias because, or was it measured? Yes. How did we measure it? A funnel plot. And that's our output. I think I forgot to mention output for heterogeneity, but it's there for all of these. Subgroup analysis. Did we perform subgroup analysis? No, with a reason or yes, and how. And you can get your output here. Then at the end, there's two parts. There's the research plan, again, which was up here. So it's just bringing you back to that, I guess. And your method section, which based on what we've input, above is going to generate some sort of output. All right, so I looked at this fresh today. This is the first time I've looked at this and I am really happy to see it. I mean, this already looks better than what you see in most published reviews. So if potential systematic review authors knew about this tool and took the time to just put in a little bit of information I think they'd end up with some higher quality search methods overall. So that's a big A++ for me. I would just caution you to be careful about leaving this page and coming back to it. It doesn't look like it's necessarily saved to the cloud. It depends on how often you clear your cache and your internet browser. So whatever you do generate in one session, make sure you export it or copy it and paste it into a document that you can save. But I would say overall, first look, this is pretty great. I'm not sure how long it's been around. I hadn't noticed it before, but I am so very pleased with it. And I hope that you are too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.